Okay, the thing that makes sourdough bread so special is that you don't use any yeast. Sourdough uses sourdough starter, which makes these natural bubbles happen inside of the bread. It also is, it gives it its whew, delicious tangy smell. So today I am going to show you, my family, friends, and probably acquaintances, how to make sourdough bread. Sourdough bread is made without the use of yeast. You create a sourdough starter, which has cultures in it, which allows the bread to rise on its own and um, brings air into the bread and also lots of amazing, delicious gut bacteria and it's what makes it sour and tasty and it's why it's way better than normal bread. So the first tool that you're gonna need is a digital scale. If you don't have a digital scale already, you will thank me once you have one because it will change your life. So the next thing you're going to need is a bowl. Uh, you probably already have one of these. It helps if it's a metal bowl. Um, for purposes that you'll find out later. After a bowl, what you're going to need is, I use a Dutch oven. If you don't have a Dutch oven, a metal bowl is a really great substitute, but basically you need something that you can put in the oven at a crazy high heat, like as hot as your oven goes, um, over top of the bread, because you need, the bread needs to have like a, a safe, comfortable space to rise in, um, and you need to kind of hold the heat into it as much as possible. I find these two things work really well for me um, for getting a good crust. So the next thing you're going to want slash need is something to shape your bread in. I have quite a few of these shaping baskets called Banatons. They're really nice because they're made of natural products and they breathe really well. Um, but if you don't have one of these, you can also use a metal strainer with the kitchen towel inside of it, a wooden basket, a plastic basket, anything that you can just put it in there. And that is whatever you put it in, it will leave that shape in the bread and create like some nice designs on it. So if you want to get funky with it, you can. But yeah, basically the only thing that's going to change is the shape of your bread and rustic bread is in. So don't worry too much about that. So the next two tools aren't super essential. And if you don't already have them in your toolbox, don't bother buying them. But if you do have them, they're going to be great to have. First off, is bench scraper. Um, this is a great tool for when you're shaping the dough. It's like an extension of your hand, but also it's used for like cutting the dough into pieces. If you've made a really big loaf um, that you want to shape into smaller loaves, it's also just great for like using around the kitchen when you have a bunch of onions and you go put them all and then you carry them in the pot, you know, pretty great. Um, but if you don't have it, not essential, just kind of a nice to have thing. The next is my lame. This is how I'm going to cut myself, do, 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 do. which is a tool for scoring the dough, basically just creating cuts and designs in the dough. So when it proofs in the oven and goes, then it will open in the places that you want it to. It creates a really nice ear, as they say. But if you don't have one of these, that's totally fine. You can use a razor blade, which is what I used to use that you can you know, steal from somebody in your house, or you can use just like a really sharp knife either a serrated knife or a normal knife, just anything that will really make a fast, quick cut. Ooh. So the ingredients for sourdough is just flour, water, salt, and thyme. And love. And love. I would recommend, honestly, anything that's unbleached flour will work. If you buy whole wheat flour, it's gonna be a denser whole wheat to your bread as bread goes. If you buy a lighter flour, it's going to be a lighter, airier, you know, it's going to lean into the Wonder Bread vibes. So yeah, and then the other thing that you're going to need, obviously, is a sourdough starter. A sourdough starter is just flour, water, and thyme. If you live in the Berlin area, I would be happy to do a contactless delivery of some of my own starter. I come to my house, I can drop it down the balcony. And if you don't, maybe you can ask somebody in your network that you know bakes a dope ass sourdough to give you a little bit of their starter. People who have sourdough starter are more than happy to give you some because you have to discard so much of it. But yeah, if you don't have any of those options, you can make your own sourdough starter with just flour, water, thyme, 
Is that the way a clock goes? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Crummy does smell good, man. Crummy smells great today. Good old Crummy. He's doing good things. So this is my sourdough starter Crummy. Um, he's been my ride and die for like well over a year now. Um, we're besties. I feed him every day. He's like a normal pet. You have to feed him. You have to love him. You have to give him words of encouragement. So I feed him every day and keep him on the counter. If you don't want to feed your sourdough starter every day, that's totally fine. You can leave it in the fridge for up to a month, which is something that I have done. And Crummy has not even been angry at me when I've come back. You just give him a couple feedings and he's back to life. So to teach you how to make a sourdough starter, I started creating a new sourdough starter yesterday. I mixed 100 grams of flour with 150 grams of water. I use rye flour for this because I find that feeding them with a little bit of a heavier flour to start off with gives the uh, sourdough cultures more to eat, basically. Um, He's hungry, he wants to be kept full longer, so he eats whole grains. So yeah, to show you how you're gonna keep this baby going and make it ready for baking, I first mixed this yesterday. Today, at around the same time, I am going to do my first feeding. So as you can see, I put this band here yesterday to show how big it was when I first mixed it. Today, I checked to see how much it had grown. It hasn't grown very much, but that's normal because it's the first day and the bacteria are just beginning to build up in there. Because he's brand new, fresh guy, he has a few bubbles that are already starting out, which is really exciting, but not very many, which is normal. But if you were to compare him to Crummy, see Crummy has a lot more bubbles. The number one rule of feeding your starter is always feed the starter more than is existing in the container that you're feeding. So I'm going to discard the majority of this. It's a bit hard to see, but I just scraped down the sides there. And now I'm going to add, I'm gonna do 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water. Ooh, 100 on the button. That feels good. So then I'm going to add 100 grams of water, so equal parts flour and water. Very simple. Do, do, do. Uh, you don't have to be super, super precise with measuring out your sourdough starter because it's not like you're even baking anything. You're just, oh, I have it here. You're just, um, you're just mixing things together. So I like to use a chopstick for stirring up my starter because I find that the chopstick allows you to get to the very bottom. See, then I'm going to now move this to where the sourdough is, where he's, where he's stationed. You can't really see because of the stirring, but I've put this where he is, and tomorrow we'll see how much he's grown um, as he gets big and strong and more fermented and funky and amazing. What you're looking for to know that your sourdough starter is ready to use is that it should be quite smelly. Um, it should smell like almost like yeast, almost like if you've ever been to a brewery, a little bit of that like good funkiness. Yeah, and it should taste sour, really sour, quite disgusting actually. Um, not disgusting, but like not great. Cool, so it's day five since we began creating our brand new sourdough starter. I gave him an additional feeding this morning at 8 a.m. and it's approximately 2 p.m. now. So you can see that over the past six hours, he's more than doubled in size. He was quite domed, but then he grew so much that he touched the top of the lid, so you can't really see that now. But he has lots of really great bubbles happening. So I think he's ready to go and you can always check by doing the flow test. So you just wet your fingers. And then take a little bit out, drop a little bit in, ta-da! So now you have everything to make your first loaf of sourdough bread, including your brand new sourdough starter. Um, if you have any questions about your sourdough starter, feel free to send me a message and I can give you a hand. But otherwise, stay tuned for the next episode of Bread in Captivity, um, where we're gonna teach you how to actually make a loaf of bread. <laughs> Looking forward to baking with you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just
Just add butter, baby. Just add butter. Is your tattoo? Mm -hmm. Bread, wine, cheese, a peach. What else do you want? Nothing is the answer. Nothing. Thank you.